Hello everyone, this is Gemini Jets 1975 coming at you with Braniff Week video number three. This time it will be a book review slash, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's probably not a review. Anyway, I don't care. Uh, I have several special guests with me, and first of all we have Thin Air Aviation. Please say hello. What is up everybody? We have Citrus Aviation. Please say hello. What's rocking everyone? We have Airline Bub, please say hello. Hello everyone. I said Airline Bub. Anyway, Gemini Jets 12, please say hello. Hello everybody. Uh, Delta Fan 270, please say hello. Hey guys. Uh, Aviation J Triple X, please say hello. Hello everyone. Aviation Winnipeg, uh, cannot say hello, but he says hi. Uh, spotting ADL, please say hello. Jesus Christ. What, what is cracking, guys? Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see here. And then we have, uh, Nate, please say hello. Hi. All right. And I believe that is it. Oh, uh, everyone, uh, Gemini Jets PR is here in spirit. He is on an airplane right now, so he cannot join. So anyways, uh, let me mute all of these uh, nice people, and I will be back with you all shortly. Okay, so we have... Braniff International Airways in Color. This book was published in 1994. It was written by George W. Searley Jr. He has a wide range of airline history books, uh, basically in the same format as this book, uh, just not in color. Um, American, he's got some that you can't find. It's hard to find any of these anyway, but I can get you know into that later if you want. Okay, so on the cover you have, there's the prop liner days, uh, you have the 707, so back here you have start of the, uh, the plane plane era, or the end of the plane plane I should say, and then of course uh, the famous years with the uh, flying colors liveries. Okay, so let's go, alright. Right here, 1993, Braniff International Airways, a pictorial history in color. All right. And then here is a picture of the author. And then uh, Charles Beard, who was the first president of Braniff. Okay. There's a brief summation of the early history of Braniff. Here's the, like a, oh, what do you call it? A route map, sorry. Had a brain fart there. And then here is uh, the Conquistador route. Okay, Braniff was famous for that. Braniff was kind of bland back in these days, you know, if you like really um, loud and crazy airlines. Uh, they were, you know, they were pretty crazy in the uh the late well the from the mid 60s until the end okay here is the flight crew walking up to the aircraft and flight packet all right and then in 19 in the late 1940s uh service to milwaukee was added we got houston Tulsa, I believe they were based in Tulsa. I don't know, should hopefully be in here when they move to Dallas. All right, more pictures, Convair 340, Fort Worth's Amon Carter Field. I believe that's here. Uh, no, this one was at Amon Carter. Okay, then right here we got the DC-7, DC-6, 
bigger planes. Okay, the El Dorado route. All right, we're getting close, guys. Here is the Electra uh, jet powered. Okay, more Electra pictures. Okay, then we have a nice big route map. Mexico City, this was November 9th of 1960. The addition of Mexico City. Here's the domestic route network. Um, looks like Dallas had already become a large operation. Chicago, Kansas City, which would play significant roles in their history. All right, here is the introduction of the 707, the Jet Age. We have the El Dorado Jet, world's fastest jetliner. Okay, then we have Fly Braniff's El Dorado Superjet. Okay. Um, more, let's see, El Dorado's, the El Dorado Superjet Gold Service. Then we have the Convair 340, more pictures. Actually, this is the 440, I'm sorry. Okay, come over here, the Boeing 720. The uh, not much known about baby brother or big brother to the 707, but Braniff did have the 720. Serving the Americas, okay. Now we have BAC-111. Oddly enough, guys, um, when Braniff 2 existed, I believe, they operated seven or uh, BAC-111s that they operated back in the uh, 1960s. So, very interesting there. All right. And then, and these are in 1965. All right, guys, so here's the where it gets interesting. 1965, Harding Lawrence was brought in as chairman, uh, president, CEO of Braniff Airways. And he brought in a lady named, uh, what was her name? Wait. I know it says on here, guys. Sorry. I should know her name. Double check here. Okay. Okay, the Jack Tinker and Partners ad agency uh, was hired to create a new look for Braniff, and they came up with this um we have a lot of different colors here basically you have a white tail with a solid fuselage the words brain of international blazoned across the, the the top of the fuselage and bi on the tail uh the emilio pucci uh uniforms for the flight attendants was called the airstrip basically they would change and the uh, uniform would evolve during flight. Here was a very famous ad that they produced. They actually had to put supports underneath the wing, obviously, to support all the weight of these people. Uh, this was a picture in Dallas at Love Field, not long after a snowstorm. Okay, so now, Okay, here we go. So all of these pictures, this is the BAC-111 in the solid. Are they, they call this the jelly bean livery for obvious reasons. All right, more aircraft, pictures at Love Field. DC, or 707s, excuse me, uh, 727-100s. All right, and then in 1955, uh, rather, Wait, 1965. Um, well, 
1965, Braniff agreed to a merger with Panagra, Pan American Grace Airways, but it was not completed until 1967 due to the change in management. Okay, there's the green fuselage. All right. So we have one of the 727s in the um, red jelly bean livery. Okay, service to Hawaii. All right, so now we have the introdu introduction of the 747, very famous. Uh, it went by many, many, many names. 747 Braniff Place was one of them. Uh, here are here's a list of the names. We have uh, Big Bird, Big Orange, Great Pumpkin, Giant Pumpkin, Big Pumpkin, Super Carrot, Biggest Orange in the World, Fat Albert. Um, but apparently, internally, it was called 747 Braniff Place. I can't remember what the other name was. And uh, Big Orange was uh, another name. And then here's a... Uh, colored picture of the seat mount. This right here was a monorail built at Love Field to carry passengers from the parking lot to the Brain of Terminal. Okay, now was the introduction of probably one of their more famous liveries. This right here is basically the um, two-tone uh, flying colors a livery. So in 1971, Braniff Airways introduced a new two-tone color scheme for basic two-tone patterns, red Aztec gold, orange ochre, dark blue light blue, and dark green light green. Braniff International titles and the Braniff BI logo appeared in white. Um, right here. And a white accent stripe separated the two colors on the fuselage. There you go. All right. Here is the wide body interior and the hideous orange interior color. All right, there is the two-tone blue on a 707. There's two-tone red, two-tone green. All right. Alexander Calder developed flying colors of South America, which was his first special livery. I uh, just gave away part of the answer to my trivia question, hint, hint. And here it is in flight. This is an incredibly rare model, quite hard to find and very expensive. It was made by Gemini Jets. Um, we also have... Here is the uh, Braniff Terminal, former Terminal 2W. Because you have 2W, 2E, 3E, 4E. This is where the International Terminal D is now. And then back here is where a planned uh, F Terminal is. This was the only terminal that was complete. Braniff was the largest tenant at the airport. Uh, they had roughly 120 daily flights. Here is another picture of the terminal. Uh, this was in 1974. Um, there was uh, plans made by Braniff to build a uh, Terminal here and here. I'll get into that a little bit later once I show you there's a picture. Okay, here is another special livery. This is the Flying Colors of of America. Uh, let's see, it was christened the Flying Colors of the United States. Okay, so here's that. Here's a picture, a couple pictures of DFW. All right, here is the two-tone green, red, blue. All right, and in 1977, uh, the designer Halston was hired, and he introduced a, um, a much more toned-down uh, uniform for the ground crew and flight attendants. 
And then this was the new interior, leather covered seats. Uh, again, introduced in 1977. All right, two-tone blue, two-tone green. Here is the Braniff World Headquarters. This later became GTE Place after Braniff went bankrupt. I don't remember what it is now, but it is on the far west side of the airport. You can definitely drive by it. All right, here's a picture of Big Orange. Uh, this right here is a dedication ceremony at the uh, inauguration of nonstop service to Paris, Frankfurt, Brussels, and Amsterdam on June 1st, 1979. Okay, here is a picture shortly before the uh, eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1981. Uh, or right, yeah, right here, or right during the eruption. Okay. All right, a little known, okay. Uh, Braniff was the only U.S. carrier to fly the Concorde. They did not paint it in their livery. Uh, however, uh, flight crews would fly the Concorde, Braniff crews from DFW to either Washington Dulles, I believe Washington Dulles, um, or let me see here, European interchange flights, DFW, Washington, D.C., and then British Airways or Air France crews would take it from Dulles to either Heathrow or Paris. So, the only... U.S. airline to fly the Concorde. Boeing 747SP service. Okay, now in 1978, they introduced what is called the Ultra Look color scheme. Uh, colors, blue metallic, sparkling burgundy, burgundy, terracotta, uh, Perseus green, chocolate brown, light blue, and mercury blue. Here's a picture uh, after the uh, shutdown in 1982. There's a red one. And then this one is a, uh, I believe this is the only aircraft painted in this one. It was kind of a light blue. Okay, this is the Mercury Blue. And then this one here is the Dallas Cowboys. Um, Ultra, like, Fall 1981. Very cool. And then there it is in flight. Here are the DC-8s. Uh, these are in Miami. That's where most, most of them flew down to South America. All right, this is a very sad picture. This was, this was a picture taken uh, right after the bankruptcy. All the aircraft were brought back to DFW. Uh, well, most of them. The DC-8s were taken to Love Field. Okay, this area right here, this apron area, was constructed in preparation for the construction of Terminal 3W. Obviously that was never uh, done. This actually remained here until 2000-ish, whenever they started construction on Terminal D. This piece of apron right here remained. Um, there was, out of the picture here, there was an extension that American built uh, that kind of went close to that uh, American added some gates for their flight. Okay. Now in 1983, uh, Braniff was purchased by the Hyatt Corporation. So they started uh, making plans to reintroduce the airline. And thus, um, what day was it? Do, do, do. Where do we go? I believe that was 1983. Oh, right here. March 1st, 1984 startup. Start Braniff would serve New York, Philly, Washington, D.C., Miami, Detroit, Chicago, Kansas City, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Denver, New Orleans, Houston, Austin, San Antonio, L.A., Las Vegas, San Francisco, all nonstop from DFW. Problem was... Passengers had moved on, so they moved the hub to Kansas City. I really like this livery. I wish they would make a model of it. 
And right here, these are pictures of the BAC-111, and these were some that Braniff had actually operated, uh, originally delivered in 65 to 66. And there's actually information right here about that. There is a transition livery. Um, oh, they were purchased from AirCal and American in the transition livery. Here is the Reebok livery, which was introduced in 1988, I believe. Um, and in, let me see here, oh, 89, okay. Close to the old livery. All right, there is the A320s that were purchased on short order from Pan Am when they could not use them. Uh, after Brand of Two shut down, these were then sold to America West. America West, uh, of course, was absorbed U.S. Airways, so they'll, these are now American Airlines A320s. But they started off as, uh, actually they started off originally, originally as Pan Am, but Brand of took them on. Here was a retirement party, Memorial Fly-In. Allen, Texas. This was Brand of Three. Uh, they brought back the Brand of International titles. All right, guys, that basically does it. Uh, sorry that took so long, but and I really didn't include as much information as I probably could have, thankfully. So uh, thank you guys so much. Please subscribe to all of my special guests. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. A little look back at a very colorful airline. Thank you so much. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.